Space Mountain exists in Disneyland, California, as well as the Magic Kingdom over in Florida. Yet despite having the same name, the rides are surprisingly different. Which one is better? After the initial success of the Matterhorn bobsleds in 1959, Walt Disney opened up to the idea of adding more thrill rides into his park, which is when the idea for a ride called Spaceport came into light. It was intended to operate very similarly to the Matterhorn, but instead of two tracks, it was going to have four tracks, all hurtling riders through outer space. However, after Walt Disney's death, the idea for the ride was shelved until 1973, when Imagineers brought it back to build into the Magic Kingdom, opening in 1975, this time calling it Space Mountain. The ride was an immediate hit, and construction began almost instantly to build another version of Space Mountain in Disneyland, opening just two years later in 1977. The two versions of the ride look almost identical. Disney World has a slight upper hand because it's a bit larger as it was built over in the Magic Kingdom where they had a whole lot of space, but Disneyland's can be seen from the streets of Anaheim which I think is really awesome. Disneyland's version of the ride also had a questionable recoloration back in 1997. They changed it to a more rusty green looking color, which I actually think was really cool. I would have loved to have seen it, but most people just hated it. Uh, so they reverted it back to white pretty shortly after, which is why as far as the exterior of the buildings go, I'm calling it a tie. Disneyland's version of the queue actually used to be a bit cooler than it is today. There was originally an escalator that would take guests up to the second floor, and a stage was there that would frequently have live music being performed while guests were waiting in line. A quick correction from future Bram who is now editing this video. I misinformed you just a little bit because I'm a big old goobus. The space stage was actually down below the escalator on ground level where live music was occasionally performed. Since then it has been torn down along with the escalator and it was replaced with this pointless kind of upper plaza area. I, I don't know what it's doing there, but that's what's there now. Now guests have to go down past the side of Pizza Port and climb up some stone walkways to get to the second floor. Really doesn't feel futuristic at all, but once you do finally get into the dark section of the line, it's a bit cooler. It feels like you're in a space station there, long dark hallways, some sound effects being played in the background, and there's windows that are basically just plastic with a stagnant picture of stars on them. Nothing too exciting, but the queue isn't awful. Disney World's queue, however, is pretty cool. You go in and instead of feeling like you're in a space station, it feels a bit more like Star Tours, like you're in some sort of travel agency or airport that will shuttle you across the universe. There's also some games to play while you're waiting in the line, which is always fun. There's basically just buttons to mash and, and games that are on the left side of the line. And instead of stagnant pictures of stars like over at Disneyland, the windows have this weird holographic effect where stars seem to whir past you as you walk by them. And every once in a while, a spaceship will hurtle through the stars as well. They're honestly a little painful to look at for too long. They're really strange, but they're a lot cooler than a stagnant picture. And these reasons are why Disney World wins for the best queue. Once the queue reaches the boarding area, however, is when Disneyland really starts to shine and you really get that immersive feeling that you're in a space station. The room has a big pointed nose at one end with a big window showing pictures of planets hurtling past you as you fly through the universe. There's also a big satellite shuttle type thing sitting in the middle of the room and you enter on the second floor. So as you wrap around the whole room going down, you can see people hopping in their space shuttles and heading off on their adventure. It really builds up the excitement and anticipation anticipation. Disney World's version is, is different. It's a much smaller room and you have the choice to go either left or right because this version of the ride has two separate tracks. So there is some excitement in picking which track to use, but apart from that, it's a pretty standard dark room with more of the holographic windows and you can't really see people boarding too far in front of you. So for the boarding area, Disneyland takes the point on this one.
The ride vehicles in Disneyland are quite comfortable. They have six rows, each row sitting two people, and there's plenty of leg room so you can store a backpack or a purse down there. In addition, the vehicles have built-in speakers to the left and right of each rider so you got that onboard soundtrack that follows you throughout the whole ride. Over in Disney World, however, the vehicles are much smaller. They're very similar to the Matterhorn bobsleds. Uh, again, six rows, but each row only sitting one person. And the biggest problem with these vehicles is that the safety restraints are in the shape of a T. So you got a bar between your legs and you pull the restraint down against your lap, which leaves very, very little room for a backpack of some sort down at your feet, which I mentioned specifically because last time I rode the ride, I had about two seconds to cram a backpack into the corner of the vehicle which was kind of stressful and not very fun. Uh, in addition, they don't have the speakers built on board because they are smaller vehicles. So Disneyland definitely takes the point for ride vehicles. Now onto the main attraction, finally the ride itself. Disneyland's version of the ride is incredibly smooth. Despite all the unexpected twists and turns and dips as you speed through outer space, the ride never really feels uncomfortable. Most importantly though is the onboard soundtrack. As I mentioned, each of the vehicles have the built-in speakers, so the soundtrack is able to sync perfectly with all the twists and dips in the track, adding an extra layer of thrill and excitement to an already perfect ride. And I do say perfect, I don't say that lightly. I think Disneyland Space Mountain is perfection. Over in Disney World, as I mentioned, there are two separate tracks just like the Matterhorn bobsleds in Disneyland, which is exciting because you get to pick a different track each time you ride the ride and have a different experience. But also like the Matterhorn, the tracks are pretty rough. And having a rough, bumpy ride as you speed through outer space kind of detracts from the whole immersive experience, but it's still fun to have the two tracks, so that's big bonus points. In addition, the Disney World version of the ride has a small, dark ride section at the beginning as you go up the lift where you can wave hi to some spacemen before you hop off their spaceship and speed through outer space. The biggest letdown, though, in Disney World is the lack of an onboard soundtrack. Overall, the Disneyland version is just better, in my opinion. And if you disagree, that's fine, but I love the Disneyland version of Space Mountain. I think if you ride them back to back, Disneyland, and then you fly over and ride the Disney World version, the Disney World one will let you down a little bit in comparison. But that's just my opinion. And lastly, the exit for the ride. Disneyland's ride ends without any real fanfare. You hop out of your shuttle, walk up a flight of stairs, look at your cool picture, and then you're thrown into one of the most congested areas of the entire park, which is not the best way to end an otherwise amazing attraction. Over at Disney World though, there's this interesting moving walkway that carries you outside of the attraction and back into Tomorrowland. On the right side of this moving walkway is a bunch of displays showing essentially vacation destinations out in the universe in outer space. It's very fun to look at, it's a good way to get you out of the attraction, much better than just walking up a flight of stairs. So as far as the exit goes, Disney World takes the point. And we have a winner. Disneyland's version of Space Mountain takes the cake with four points, leaving Disney World with three. But again, that's just my opinion. Maybe you like Disney World's version a bit better, or maybe you've been to Hong Kong or Tokyo or Paris and like their versions of the ride even more than these two. Either way, go down to the comments below and leave me a comment telling me which ride you would like to see in the next edition of Versus. And that is all for today's Disneylander. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to leave a like and share it with a friend and keep checking by because more Disneylanders are always on their way. But I've got to get going now. I have a spaceship to catch, so I'll be seeing you next time.